hi hi good evening everyone i hope uh, we are live just give me a quick confirmation guys if you can see me and hear me very clearly yes creations we have started just give me a quick confirmation guys if you can hear me very clearly and also see me and of course my screen is also visible to you hi harsh hi abhishek hi pranav great to see you all again good evening good evening benjamin right so guys a very good evening and welcome you all to another react js session right so next five days you are you guys are going to basically spend learning about what is react and how you can get started with react and how you can build amazing projects how you can ideate on those and how you can get started started with building stuff in react right so your trainer of course uh, swara gupta is right here i'll call him in a bit but before that uh, as we all know the drill we are going to learn about how as a student what you guys have to follow right so that to, to make sure that you are getting the certificates and everything right so the first step the very first and foremost step is to go to the website or all you can do is just scroll down just scroll down i'll just take this screen here for a bit right so just scroll down and open the description and any link like all the links are same just click on this link and that should take you to the enrollment page if you have not enrolled in the course before first go and enroll yourself in the course that is the very first mandatory step that you have to follow right so that you can get the emails and whatsapp notifications and you can join the whatsapp communities where we give updates about the course right so once you're done law once you log in and everything right uh, i'm just going to log in let me just i hope i remember my password Okay, so once I'm logged in, right, it is just going to ask me that, would you like to enroll? So I'm going to say yes. And it, it, it will take some time and do all the backend stuff and get you enrolled. Yeah, I'm going to clarify, I will get the certificate. So make sure that you are, go, you are, you are attending this and making sure that all the doubts are clear right away. Let me just refresh. right so once you have enrolled right so now what is going to happen is you can basically see your schedule right here right if you see right today is the day one and you can see the mark attendance button right here since the lecture is live you have to go here and mark your attendance correct you can also use this page to navigate to the youtube page where the session has been happening and similarly for the next five upcoming days you can come to this page and basically see your videos or the recordings or where you can join right the timings are same 6 30 from today till friday right and for joining our telegram group you can use this button and similarly for whatsapp communities you can use the whatsapp button if you want to refer to your friends and earn some coins and swags you can just head over to the refer and earn button copy this link and share with your friends right the next thing that you can do important thing that that is progress tracking right so now this is linked to your certificates okay this progress tracker is linked to your certificates so what if, if you just read it very carefully right your progress is tracked on two things assignments and attendance assignments optionally if given by the trainer attendance very important right and there are two parameters that are very important for you to get the certificates the first is that the program should be over so basically you will be only able to generate the certificates post 8th december like post friday 6 30 or like when the session ends right around 8 that is when you'll be able to you can say download the certificates and of course you should have attended more than three lectures so that the progress becomes more than 50 right so once you do that there will be a button that would be available here you have to just go and show you how it looks like uh yeah i have to head over to my programs and yes since i have completed this course if you see right this is how the certificate option would be available here where i can go and download my certificate i hope this is very clear to everyone just give me a quick yes uh this workshop is going to be uh one and a half hours every day please try on the laptop please try on the laptop avoid using mobile for the sessions right if i have to show you i hope there's generate okay i've already generated this let me check if there is any okay this is expired i hope you get the idea right 50 percent or more progress 
and the class should be over that is when you will be able to download the certificate right so now let me check if i can see any and see there is yeah one more thing if you go again into this description right there is one link called as a documentation right i'm just going to explain you that and i head over to giving the session to saurabh right so just head over this documentation i am just going to open this link for you guys now this documentation is going to be your go to place for everything related to this course all the notes or the interview questions or whatever is being discussed or taught is available in this you can say the whole documentation i hope there is some yeah it is open right so i'm just going to help you with the direct link in case the link that you're trying to reach is not loading because of everyone trying to access at the same time right what i'll do is i'll just copy paste the direct link for you guys in the chat just give me a sec and yeah please try it. please bookmark it save it somewhere or just send it to yourself on whatsapp or email so that it is always handy for you guys so i'm just going to spam it a bit yeah all in all in one documentation is there already but i am going to give you the direct link because i think a lot of you guys are going to face an issue since everyone is using it yeah that's that's fine i'll just i'm just trying to copy the original link just give me a sec yeah yeah this is this is the original link i have copy pasted it and i'll also go and update it in the description if you guys want to use it yeah let's go and check this i'm just going to reload this page okay and i'm just going to open this i'm just going to open this if you see right there is a new link that has been uh, that is available you can just open this and that should take to you to this page okay so now this 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 has the all the notes and everything okay okay just give me a sec guys just give me a sec i am just fixing the link there is some issue with the link stay with me for a minute everyone is trying to use it at the same time just give me a minute and i'll fix this for you Right. So meanwhile, right. Meanwhile, I'm fixing. Can you just help me understand how many of you guys are from programming background or have done any kind of programming before? Any, any kind of. It can be any language. Uh, need not be necessary that it should be related to web or something. Any language. How many of you guys know programming? Come on, come on, guys. How many of you guys know programming? This is the new link. I'm just spamming it in the chat. Okay, and I'm also updating it. Right? Okay, so again, the same step we're going to do. We are going to do one refresh. Okay, and if you can see, right, the link is now available here. Now, let me explain this. Okay, this will land somewhere right here. Now, see, whatever step that I've mentioned, right, regarding regarding enrollment enrolling yourself and getting certificate and everything is right here you can see it step by step with proper screenshots and everything in case you get stuck on the onboarding and offboarding process second thing is whatever things that are going to be covered in this whole five days are available here right from installation of node.js npm packages and everything right and how to build your first app till using everything that is being that is going to be covered right is available here so you can always go and see the notes, copy a few of the syntax wherever required and use that in the code, right? So now the last important part that we have is the interview question. So of course, after those sessions, right, a lot of you guys might want to appear for interview of web developer front end or some roles, right? So you, of course you can check out the interview question. So every section, every subtopic will have around 10 questions available, right? So you can of course go and check that, I guess. I hope everything is clear and if anything is not clear always come back and watch the recording and of course keep this document handy that is something i am telling to you again and again right so with that let me call saurav into the frame so hi saurav so he's right here okay he's not gone anywhere just let me let me just take this screen back to where it was yeah i hope just i hope you guys okay i messed up with some windows just give me a sec Check it out. 
maybe i'm just trying to get it somewhere else so meanwhile you can do hi hello <laughs> it's just right here just just i hope is visible to you guys let me just uh yeah so i'll just hand it over to saurabh so he's your trainer and now uh i'll just go in the back screen okay thank you prasad okay then let me see okay okay good evening guys good evening everyone good evening good evening good evening am i audible am i visible can you guys please confirm that once hi ganesh how are you buddy good evening guys good evening everyone good evening kritika good evening md shashank how are you all good evening shoheb vanshika komal preet good evening guys okay akhilesh is also here utpal is also here good evening guys good evening everyone how are you all first tell me how are you all hello sir big fan thank you so much others good evening buddy good evening and welcome to the stream good evening ame shantanu rohan good evening guys okay so as prasad has discussed almost everything that you guys need to know before starting this course so i'm going to be taking the whole coding part of this okay so i hope now you are cleared with all the documentation stuff and guys yes just to give you some info please don't forget to mark your attendance every day okay and certificate will be generated only if you complete the course so you can you will be able to generate certificates only after the end of the course so till that time don't worry about the certificates okay our main focus should be learning and understanding everything about react for the next 5 days and only after completion of 5 days you will able to you look you will be able to generate the certificate so don't worry about that as of now i know jsc java node expert that's amazing that is amazing lavanya that is amazing really amazing that really good i am good i am good hi kashwat thank you so much bari sir will you teach next framework to mostly yeah if we schedule it definitely i'll be teaching that don't worry about that and let me just fix the mic for a second yeah okay so good evening guys good evening and let's start with something called as react now before we move ahead before we actually start with react let me just confirm a few things from you guys okay so how much like how many guys from you are actually you know know something like html css or javascript let's see let's see how many of you guys know something maybe either html or css or javascript of all three let me just see how many of you will be knowing this uh, will this be full english yes david yeah yeah it will be full english i know js html and css okay that's great that's great let me see guys come on how many of you know a little bit of html css and javascript let's see okay yes i know me 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 i know css html and css only okay i can see all of your okay okay that's great so i can see all of you almost know about html css and js so that's amazing guys because if i have to say the prerequisite for this course is at least you should know a little bit of html a little bit of css and a little bit of javascript but again if you don't know any one of this or any of this it's still okay because you can attend today's session but i would suggest you to at least go ahead and learn a little bit of html css and javascript okay so if you know html and css amazing you can still continue if you only know html amazing you can still continue but i would really suggest you after today's session just go ahead tonight or tomorrow morning just go ahead before the second session learn a little bit about html css and javascript because this course requires that because we're going to be starting with react which is simply a javascript library that means you should know a little bit of javascript before starting with react it's a prerequisite it's a very important thing to know so if you know it amazing if you don't know you don't have to go anywhere learn today's session understand today's session and then go back and learn a little bit of html css javascript a lot of videos are available on youtube and even on our channel you can watch them too so yeah let's go let's go and let's start and also guys before we start please don't forget to like the session everyone come on then i hope you're excited let's go and let's start by understanding everything about react okay so let me quickly open a jamboard okay where we'll be understanding everything about react and then we'll move ahead in basically installing the stuff and everything okay so no no issues guys and guys again i am going to be starting react from scratch so don't worry about anything okay don't worry about anything okay so let's go everyone let's go so what exactly is react let's see how many of you know this so guys according to you how many of you know what exactly is react can you please tell me 
till that time i'll just open some kind of a notepad basically so notepad let's see if we can get an online notepad somewhere okay yeah so it is here which i normally use a lot of time in macbooks so yeah come on guys let's see how many of you can answer what exactly is react according to you i just want to know how many of you know a little bit about react okay i can see uh, javascript library it's a framework why react why react it's a very important library right because even if you want to learn next or remix or something like that in future you should know react right and right now it is one of the most famous uh, libraries correct front end library library of js framework of js amazing react is a framework js lib okay a lot of correct answers and a lot of a little bit of okay fine if we can also call it a framework that's also not a bad thing but it's not exactly a framework sir your screen is blurry okay uh, i would suggest to just check the internet connection once uh, buddy because i i'm also watching it on youtube and it's completely fine so just i'm really sorry if it is blurry but just confirm once just check just check your internet connection once or maybe you know just the youtube quality once you can increase the quality shivani just check it once created single page application what projects are we going to create i think we are going to create a news app at the end a real live news app that is what i'm planning i don't know it's okay it's okay aspirants it's okay buddy okay okay so guys i i have like you guys were amazing a lot of correct answers were there in this so that is really amazing so now let's go and let's discuss what exactly is this react okay so if i have to just give you a simple definition react is nothing but a javascript library simple now oh guys don't mind my spelling mistakes if i make any so react is simply a javascript library which is used to make user or you can say interactive user interfaces that's all that's all react is simply guys react is simply a javascript library which is which is basically used to make interactive user interfaces now for all the people who are coming from scratch background who only know html css and javascript you might be knowing that we normally now if we don't have something called as react or let's say you have never learned react okay so the normal concept is we use html to create a web page correct we use html to create web page and put contents on it like image audio video right all that text links then we use css to style it correct everyone that's what we do right now then we use css to style it to arrange our elements here and there and then we go ahead and we use javascript to make our elements interactive where we can click or move something or double click or scroll where we can do animations using javascript right we can you know call apis using javascript fetch that data we can generate live elements using javascript so normally we use html css and javascript to make our interactive user interface right so whenever we want to make a website our front end is always made using html css and javascript right this is what we normally do html to create content right create content we can say create content then we use css to simply style content and then we use javascript to the main thing that is basically generate live content or you know something like let's say dynamic content you can say so generate dynamic content based on data coming from internet or something like that and also perform some kind of animations and events right so these are the main things that we do using html css and javascript we use html css javascript to create web pages which are interactive now react is almost exactly the same it is a javascript library that means it is simply some code or collection of code or files written by someone else which we can use to do the exact same thing that we do using html css javascript but the best part is a lot of functionalities and modularization has been already done we just have to install that library in our project and we don't have to start everything from scratch now see let me give you an idea normally what we do if we want to start a new project and if i'm starting it using html css javascript what i have to do guys i have to start with by creating folders right writing proper html code writing proper css code writing proper javascript code then mixing it all together to make a proper web page in that case what happens is when you're writing everything from scratch 
a lot of times you have seen that in your web page you might want to use something again and again multiple times right so in that case you write that code again and again multiple times then you want to call you know some kind of internet to get data and then you want to put that data in your html page so we use javascript to again generate dom elements then right we use get element by id and all that stuff so we need to write a lot of code to put all that in your html page and generate dynamic content so if you have done use it using html css javascript you know how tough it gets how tricky it gets i'm not saying it's impossible because i also love doing things with html css javascript but that's what happens so what react is is react is a javascript library which is created by meta which was initially facebook okay they created that library to help you to lessen the code and make your applications faster but react still uses html css js only so internally it is still html css javascript but someone has already written a lot of code for you which you can directly use to start building your dynamic user interfaces but you don't have to write everything from scratch like html css javascript you are going to be using all the functions all the features provided by this library so because guys the library is what library is simply collection of functionalities so react also it's a library written in javascript written in a language called as javascript you simply have to install it and you have to you start using all the functionalities given by that particular library which will help you to create web pages which will help you to put content which will help you to style content and also generate dynamic elements but you won't be doing everything from scratch and you will see when you code you will see the performance of your web page will be much faster because you will be working with the react way since you're using a library you will be following their ways of doing things secondly it will provide you reusability so you don't have to write code again and again and don't worry i'll be showing you all that stuff so guys that's the base idea so instead of react you can still use your basic idea but by using react your development time can be faster your application will be faster because you are following their good ways of creating the application you will be writing less code and your code will be much more readable and understandable right so that's the main thing so that means overall your performance so if i have to mention overall you can say increased performance right increased performance then you can say decreased lines of code and faster development these are the few things that you get and i think any developer wants that right increased application performance decreased lines of code less lines of code more maintainable and readable code and faster development is that clear guys so that is what is react js or react which is good for freshers i think first you have to learn js without js you can't learn react because js is a library which is sorry react is a library which is made in js only so you have to learn js first to understand react so guys understood the whole idea what exactly is react just i have just given you a definition don't worry i have not told you anything about it because i'm going to be discussing that in some time but just to give you idea it is simply a javascript library which is used to make user interfaces that's it the exact same thing that you did using normal html css javascript but in a much more better way because internally react is still using html css javascript only and you will be also doing some part of it but a lot of things will be already done for you the way you will be collaborating your elements here and there will be much more easier the way of putting elements together will be much more easier the way of integrating data with html elements will be much more easier so that's what the case is okay so all good guys how much js is enough basic js like you know a uh, basic programming loops conditions arrays that should be there and i think you should be knowing about a little bit about dom manipulation like get element by id then how does you put data from javascript to html all that basic stuff so basic dom manipulation and basic programming javascript should be enough should be enough yes and yeah guys ultimately when you write less code you're less error prone and when you're following some rules and regulations provided by a particular library you'll be doing less errors right so yeah that's it yeah definitely akhilesh we will be discussing definitely definitely okay so guys are we ready everyone so got the idea so when whenever someone asks you simply say react is a javascript library which is used to make interactive user interfaces that's all so basically sometimes you can also say it is a front end app development library that's what you can say because you're only building front end using react 
You're only building front end using React. It's a front end app development library. You're only building front end, not the back end. But yeah, in future, you can integrate Next with React to also make back end stuff. You can make full stack apps then after that. But before that, you still have to learn React. Okay. So it's a front end app development library. It only helps you to develop the front end, not the back end, not APIs or something like that. But in future, you can, you know, include Next, include uh, other frameworks to do all this stuff. But that is the secondly part. Right now, it is a front end app development library. And the main competitors, like in few, like if you want to know, you also have something called as Angular in the market. Right? You might have heard of it. You also have something called as Vue in the market. Then you also have something called as Svelte. These are some of the React competitors. These are also exactly same what React is. They are also front-end app development libraries. But yeah, some of them are frameworks. Like Angular is a framework because it is, you know, bigger than React. Bigger in the size. Like, you know, when you install React, you only are installing a library. You do the all the project setup yourself. In Angular, you get the whole project setup by default. That's why we call Angular as framework. But it is still a front-end app development framework. So these are some of the, you know, competitors of React. But as of now, I think in the market, React is the most famous and the most asked for library. So yeah, that's why we are learning it. So let's go. Okay. Form handling via hooks and callback. Yes, yes. And yeah, guys, I think someone asked me, right? Are we going to be learning hooks and all that stuff? Yes, we are going to be learning hooks. Yes, as well. So now, guys, let's go and let's talk a little more about React. So as I have already mentioned, it is simply... I have the definition here. Okay. It is simply a JavaScript library, which is used to make interactive user interfaces. So now let's try to understand how React works and how it makes your life easier. So guys, React is a component based development library. Okay. React is a component based development library. Now, if we understand components, then all the things will be very clearer in future. So React is a component based development library. So now we have to understand what exactly is a component and what is component based development. Okay. So now guys see to understand this, let's open a site. Okay. Let's open a site. One of the most famous that we always open is Flipkart. Okay. Something like this. So let's open something like Flipkart. Now, if I tell you to code this page using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, what will your normal approach? We'll create one HTML page. We'll create one CSS page, right? And we'll start by coding the header first. Then we'll code this area. Then we'll code this area. So in a single HTML page, we'll start coding everything. Correct. We'll code the header part. Then we'll code this, uh, let's say category part, then banner part, then, you know, best of electronics part, then best of, you know, beauty food toys part. So we'll code everything in a single HTML page. And then we'll have, have a CSS page where we'll be writing the CSS of all the HTML that we are creating. And then we might have a JS page in which we'll write the logic of, you know, this particular slider or, you know, this hover effect that we are getting here. We might use JavaScript to do all this stuff. So that's what we'll do. We'll create a single HTML page in which all the things will be there. Everything will be coding in a single page. And if you see this thing properly, you can see a lot of things in here look very similar. Like for example, this whole box, this whole best of electronic box and this beauty food toys box, they look exactly same. Look at this guys. See this box, best of electronics, this whole box and this beauty food toys box is exactly same. Or for a second view, see this, a single product, image, text, price, image, text, price, image, text, price. That means everything is looking exactly similar. But if we are doing it in HTML, we might be coding everything again and again. That's what we do, right? That's what we do in HTML. We code everything again and again. And to solve it, then we might use JavaScript. But when you are using JavaScript, you have to perform some tricky DOM manipulation code to generate these elements using some real time data, right? That means a lot of coding needs to be done. Secondly, it will be all in your single HTML page. That's the issue. So handling all these things together at one place becomes very, very tough. Secondly, in future, if you scroll down, some elements are generated when you scroll. That is also very tough using your normal JS, right? That is why we have React. React is a component based library. So what exactly is the component idea here? Let's try to understand that. So what React says is whenever you want to develop a web page, don't develop it like a single HTML file. Normally you don't do it. What you have to do is you divide your web page into components. A component simply guys, 
you can say a component in react is nothing but a small piece of ui or small piece of your web page like simply you can say something like you know in this case header like i can consider header as a component then i can consider this box as a component then i can consider this banner as a component so everything in this page can be considered as a component and then what react says is create all the components okay let me go on the home page again create all these components separately don't code all of them inside one single page create all of them separately create your header component separately create your banner component separately create your best of electronic component separately create your beauty food toys component separately so react says divide your whole web page into multiple components and create them separately and then whenever you need them fit them like puzzle pieces to create one single web page that's what the idea is so create all of the things separately so now see the logic guys so if I, we are doing it what we'll be doing is something like this so we'll be creating let's see let's give you an idea we'll be creating the header component separately right then we'll be creating so if i have to mention it so this is my header component let's say this is my header component right, guys don't mind my drawings here please hopefully please don't mind my drawings so let's say this is my header component i have created it separately right then let's say this is my banner component somewhere so banner component you have to create it separately again so basically you're going to be creating all your components separately so let's say banner component then let's say let me call this as category best of electronics this whole box as a category component or a product component because it is a collection of products so let's say that is my product component so i'm going to create my products component separately for example and now when you want to build a web page go on a single page and just put your components piece as one so put your header here then put your banner after it which you have created separately and then put your products after it so basically you'll be getting this page where you'll be having a header a banner and then one product now if you see below here you're again having exactly same component but with different data so you're again having an exact same component which looks exactly same so what you can do now is you can reuse the products component that you have created again but you can change the data react will give you a way for that don't worry you can change the data but you can use the exact same component that you have already created and now if you see here you can see it has been you know repeated around four to five times in this whole web page see that guys you can see right the whole product component is being repeated around four to five times see here also books toys and more products component pick your styles product component top deals on tv same see they have the exact same style and structure so you can just reuse the same component again and again you don't have to write it again and again that's the whole idea that is how you save your time is that cleared everyone getting the idea that is the whole logic okay so that's where react is that's what react does so you can reuse the same product component again and again and not only this now inside the product component if you see a single product it's simply a combination of image text and price image text and price image text and price so you can also create a separate component for this product that means it's your mind you have to think how smaller you want your component to be so you can also separately create a product component a single component called as product right and then you can reuse that product component again and again so in this you can see in our web page you can see I'm using the same product component around 100 times. See, so many times I've repeated it. So I can reuse the same product component, which I only create once, but I can use it 100 times so that I don't have to code it 100 times. I'll code it only once and use it 100 times. That's the whole idea. Is that clear, guys? That's the basic idea. That's what React does. No need to, you know, jumble it up. That's it. That's it. Now, internally, React provides much more things, which we'll be understanding when we go in deep, when we go and start coding but for now this is what react is so react is simply a component based front end development library which helps you to develop your uis in a much more better way by dividing your web page into components and then you fitting those components as puzzle pieces to create a web page and not only that guys now let's say you want to use that same component in some other web page you can use it there so create component once and use it 10 times 20 times up to you save time in coding and not only this guys, a lot of things are there 
in future as well, which we'll be talking about. So guys, is that cleared everyone? Understood what a component is? That's it. That's what a component is, a part of a UI. And the best part is guys, while you're creating your component, you'll be writing separate HTML, separate CSS and separate JS for it. So every component will have its separate HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That means they are completely independent. By default, components are not dependent on each other. It's you who will decide. Do you want to make them dependent or not? So header can have its own HTML, CSS, JS. Banner can have its own HTML, CSS, JS. Products can have its own HTML, CSS, JS. That means if one of the components is doing something wrong or something is happening, the other components won't get affected. Now, if you're building a single page and if you code everything, if some problem happens, everything will get disturbed. Not in this case, because every component is having its own code separately written somewhere. And that's why if something fails, other components will not be hampered. Secondly, because you're fitting them like puzzle pieces, you can remove any component at any time. You can put any component at any time without worrying about, you know, disturbing the whole web page. You might have seen, right? You might have seen if your HTML, if you have ever coded HTML web page, you know, if you have coded around thousand lines of code and you make one mistake, the whole web page gets disturbed and then you have to figure out what happened. Or if you remove some code from it, the whole web page again gets disturbed, right? That's what happens normally. Right. But if you use react, you can actually put components like puzzle pieces. If you remove any component, nothing happens to other things. If you put any component, so basically it becomes easier to remove and add components. That's what react is. Okay. That's the whole idea. Is that clear guys? Now this is one part of react. React is much more. I'll also tell you in future why react is named as react. Don't worry about that as well, but that we'll talk about later on. Let's start with the easy stuff. Okay. So guys, this is what React is, and this is what we are doing in the start. So now we'll be installing a React based project. But before that, we also have to do some setup. So don't worry about that. We'll do that as well. But guys, I hope you got the idea of React. Yes, you can also use Bootstrap. See guys, now normally we're going to be writing normal CSS in React. You can use normal CSS, but in future, I will also show you how to integrate Bootstrap in React. See guys, React is a library. So it's internally already settled up with a lot of things because it's a library created by someone else. We have not created it, right? It's created by someone else. So a lot of things are already settled up in there and we have to follow their approach. Okay. But the secondary thing is we can still integrate other things with react and that I'll be teaching you like how to put bootstrap and all that stuff. Okay. So now guys, what we have to do is we have to go ahead and install a react based project. That means a project setup, which will be already having a react library installed inside it. Okay. So guys, the first thing that you should now to start learning react or to start developing react based applications. The first thing that you have to do is you have to install node.js in your computer. Okay. And it's very easy guys. You just have to go online. Now why node.js? Because it will, it's a JavaScript running environment. So first thing that you need, it will basically set up your computer for JavaScript. Secondly, it will provide you with the package manager like NPM and NPX, which will help you to install projects, install libraries in your computer. And that is what we need. We want to install a react project and in future, some extra libraries to do some extra stuff in react. So that is why we need to install node.js so that we can get those package managers like NPM and NPX so that we can start installing react project and extra libraries that we need in future. Okay. Uh, can anyone tell me why react, uh, uh, Sham Sundar, we have planned React for now, but in future we are planning for Angular and all that stuff as well. Okay. Hi, hi Vasu, how are you buddy? Hi, positive. Okay. So now guys, the first simple thing you have to do is now see guys, there is no use of Node.js here normally because we'll be still using our browser as our running environment, but still we need all those package managers and stuff. Okay. So that's why we need to install Node.js. Is that cleared guys? So simply just go online and search for Node.js download. Okay. And again, guys, for everyone who don't know, Node.js is simply a JavaScript runtime. That's all. It is not a framework. It is not a library just to clear your confusion. So just search for it. You'll get this simple first link. Okay. Download button. Click on that. Okay. Now, depending on your OS, Windows, Mac, whatever it is, just download. So if you're using Windows, I will suggest you to install the Windows installer 64 bit. I think for now, Everyone might be already having 64 bit computers. And for Mac, you can simply click on this button, Mac OS installer, 
Just click on this button. It will install. It will directly start the installation for you. It will download an installer. Just click on it, co copy it into the bin, and that's all. That's all you have to do. Okay. So that's. Uh, is React JS mandatory to learn React Native? I think yes. If you have, if you know, see, understand this, Pradeep. If you already know React JS, then React Native is already 60 to 70 percent done. Because when you learn React, you're using, you're creating web applications. That means you're integrating HTML with it. Correct. But if you go for React Native, then there you have mobile based components. But the concept of React, the logic of how it works, right? The states, the props, all that stuff is exactly same. So yeah, if you learn React JS, React Native is almost done for you. You just have to see what are the extra mobile components that you have to learn. That's all. Okay. So guys, again, just go here and download the LTS. Okay. Long term support one because the current one might have some bugs or something like that. Just download the long term support uh, version. Anything is fine. So just download it. And once you install it, once you're done installing it, you just have to, you know, uh, let me open the terminal. Okay. I hope you can see my terminal. Okay. I don't know why it's not coming in the second. Strange. It's very strange. Wait. Yeah. So here we go, guys. Let me see if it zooms. Yeah. It is zooming correctly. Okay. Is Angular similar to React? Yeah, kind of because Angular is also a component based framework. So yeah, the idea is same. The way of coding, the way of structuring is different, but the idea is exactly same. Okay. So guys open your terminal. So once you're done with installing Node.js to confirm if it is installed or not. So guys, again, simple, just go on that site, download the version according to your PC. Simply install it like a normal game that you have installed in your childhood, right? Just install it like a normal game or a normal application. Double click next to everything. It's fine for now for the basic setup. And just yes, once it is installed, open your terminal and you should be able to run this command. Just run node space hyphen V that stands for node version. So you're trying to check the node version installed in your PC. Okay. Just press enter. And if the version comes up, that means node is properly installed. If it doesn't come up, right, that means first try is restart your PC. And even after restarting, it is not there. That means the problem will be either in the path or maybe the installation. So just check it once. But mostly, I think for 99% people, for, like I think for almost everyone, they should be done. Hopefully, there should be no mistake here. Okay. So for most of you, it will be done. If it's not done, try installing it again. Okay. But I think it will be done. For most of you, it will work definitely. So guys, that's it. Node hyphen V and guys, node is installed for your complete computer. So anywhere you go, open a terminal, this command will work anywhere in your computer. This command will work. Now guys, see when you install Node.js, now let me tell you again, let me tell you that as well. I know a lot of people are all like, you know, they have some kind of confusions with that. So let me tell you when you install Node.js, what are the things that you get? Let me tell you that when you install Node.js, the first thing that you get, the most important thing is the JavaScript runtime. That means a running environment for JavaScript. Simple. You get a running environment for JavaScript. That means now you can run JavaScript anywhere in your PC without using any HTML. See, normally what happens, guys, if you want to write JavaScript, you create a HTML page, then you write a script tag in that, and then you run that page on the browser, and then you write JS code. That means to run JavaScript, you always need a browser. And that's fine because browser is the by default running environment for JavaScript. Browser is a by default running environment for JavaScript. But if you want to run JavaScript outside the browser, normally like a general programming language, like Java, like C, like C++, then you need Node.js. So install Node.js in your computer. And what for Windows? Same, same Craig, same buddy, same. Just go on that site and see from here, Windows installer, 32 bit or 64 bit, depending on your PC. Just install that, download that. Once it is downloaded, just double click. That's all. Double click, next, 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 and that's it. It should be done. And same command. Command will be same. Okay. So guys, if it is installed, you're done. Don't worry. It's done. You have the setup now. You have the node setup. Now let me tell you how to update already installed Node.js. Uh, Harshil, for that, you can see the update command, which is available on the documentation of Node, or you can just reinstall it. It will update it. By default, it updates. Harshil, if you install it again, it will update. Don't worry. Okay. 
Uh, just install it again. Anyone who wants to update their Node.js version in their computer, just reinstall it. It's that simple. Just reinstall. That's all. Okay. Now, see guys, everyone, please focus here. So when you install Node.js, for all the new people, when you install Node.js, the first thing that you get is a JavaScript runtime, which we don't need right now in our lecture because we'll be still using browser, but it's fine. I'm just telling you what you get when you install Node.js. You get a JS runtime, which will help you to run JavaScript anywhere without depending on browser, without depending on HTML. Second thing that you get is something called as NPM, which is a node package manager. Now, there are lakhs of people in this world who create JavaScript libraries, React being one of them. But React is not a only JS library. React is one of the most famous JS libraries. But there are a lot of libraries like bcrypt for encrypting, de decrypting a text. Then you have JSON web token. There are tons form, for form validations. You have libraries for creating UIs. You have libraries. There are thousands of people who create thousands of libraries every day related to JavaScript. And some are also created by the official developers. So NPM is a tool which you also get when you install Node.js, which helps you to install, uninstall and manage those libraries in your project. So let's say you're building a project based on JavaScript and now you want to do form validation. So you can search online, which is the best JS library for form validation. Now there might be multiple people who have created those libraries. If you just go and check the documentation, you like one library, you can use NPM to install that library directly into your project directly. And if you don't need it, you can also use NPM to uninstall it. So NPM is a tool which helps you to download or install libraries and tools related to JavaScript in your project, in your PC. That's what you can say. And then you also get something called as NPX, which is node package executor, which simply exists. Now, sometimes you know what happens. You use NPM to install a tool and then you use that tool to do something. Right. So you use NPM to download a tool and then that tool is downloaded in your PC and then you use that tool to do something. Now, sometimes you don't want to download a tool and you directly want to use it. So you can use NPX. NPX directly executes the tool or executes the package from the internet without even downloading it in your PC. So if you ever plan to, you know, you don't want to download anything, you just want to use it once, you can use NPX. So NPM is for downloading, NPX is for directly executing any tool that you want without downloading it. Simple idea. That's the difference between NPM and NPX. And Node Package Manager, Node Package Executor. And when you install Node.js, you also get a lot of inbuilt libraries like FS, URL, there are a lot of libraries that you get, HTTP. So when you install Node, you also get a lot of libraries related to JavaScript. These are the official libraries, but you can also download the third party libraries created by some normal people. Like you can also create a library and launch it online. It's completely fine. But right now, guys, we are not interested in this runtime. We are not interested in this inbuilt libraries. We are only interested in NPM and NPX to just, which will help us to install React library. As I said, that is their job and then we can start using the things. Okay, everyone, good to go. And also guys, please don't forget to like the session, everyone. Come on, let's aim for 450 likes today. Come on, guys, almost 550 people are watching. Let's aim for 450 to 500 likes for today's session. Let's see how much we can get. Okay, everyone. So let's go and let's use this NPX because now we have installed Node.js. So when you install Node.js, you get all these four things. Let's use NPX to install or create a new React-based project. Now, guys, when I see a React based project, that means you will get a complete project setup, which will internally have React already by default. Okay. So we are not only installing a React library, we are installing a complete React based project in which some basic setup is done for us so that we don't have to start from scratch, but internally it is having the React library, which will give you all the React features and functionalities. Okay, everyone. So let's go. So now go to whichever folder you want in your computer. So any folder is fine. So let's say for me, I'm going to go in this documents folder. Now guys, again, you can go in any folder you want. If you're in windows, C drive, any drive, wherever you want to go, go there, just perform a right click. Okay. And I don't know why it's not coming here. Okay. No issues. I just wanted to open a command window here, but I'm not getting that option. So let me create one more folder here. Let's call it as react essentials. Okay. So this is the folder in which I'll have all my projects. 
okay and in here okay i why i'm not getting the option of opening the terminal here okay no issues guys we can also you know navigate to it it's completely fine but i should get the option right i don't know why i'm not getting an option mm. and i'm also very new to macbook guys so don't worry it, uh, we'll figure it out it's okay completely fine okay so this is the folder am i doing something wrong here where do we get all the options strange okay no issues guys we can directly navigate to it then no issues let's navigate it from here so cd uh, to which folder it was documents right so documents now we are here and then cd to react essentials in windows guys you can directly do a right click and open in terminal window open a, win a terminal window that's it or secondly you can just open your command prompt and cd cd to your folder wherever you want to go is that clear guys i don't know why it happened okay i'm also very uh, fresh to macbook using macbook but that's fine uh, it's okay we can easily adjust to it so guys what i did is i opened my command prompt and by using cd i basically navigated to the folder where i wanted to go so right now this folder that we have this react essentials is opened in my command prompt so right now from my command prompt i am into that particular you know folder it's okay okay fine any shortcut is fine okay any shortcut is fine guys so you can also just go in your folder in windows it's very easy just right click and open in terminal window that's the option or you can open your normal terminal and just cd cd your way through it okay now once you're in that folder through command prompt now inside this folder okay where is it wait let me just check inside this particular folder i want to create a new project a new react project so now i'm here already so now run a command called as npx then use a tool called as create react app now see guys if you use npm so first you have to install this tool create react app and then you will create react app but i don't want to install this tool that's why simply npx then space create react app space the name of the app that you want so let's say i want to name it as something like first app okay that's it guys first app and name it anything whatever you want guys but name it very sensibly as this is the first session that's why simply first app yes any terminal is fine shandar even your vs code terminal is fine but for installing projects i normally don't use the vs code terminal i simply use uh, this one the basic uh, terminal and that's it guys now it might take a minute maybe depending on the net connection to download the whole react project now see guys it has directly started if you use npm you have to install this tool first so npm install create react app and then you have to create the project now without installing the create react app tool i'm directly using it from online from internet and directly creating my react project so now guys it will take one minute and you can see here see it is installing internally i said i want to create a first app a react app internally that app is having react react dom react scripts and cra template and don't worry about that i'm going to be explaining all them to you one by one okay but it let it take its minute to install and you're done guys see the whole react project is created and now we don't even need this terminal so you can close it or let's leave it for some time and here we go guys our first app folder is here see that and see it is having so many things here okay it is having so many things here now let's open this our project this first app into vs code to understand how many things it is already having and what they do okay so guys please understand you have not only installed react you have installed a react based project which will already have some basic setup with the react library internally there okay guys everyone and now any code editor is fine guys up to you you can use vs code you can use brackets atom php strom web strom anything is fine but i would suggest you to use vs code from my personal side because i like that code editor it's very easy to use it it's very easy to install extensions so it's very amazing okay so i already have it in my pc so i'm simply going to open it quickly so let me simply open vs code so you can also open it hopefully i have it in my pc it should be there ah here we go wait don't i have it i should be having it vs code in my pc let me see just guys once where do i have it 
yeah here we go so i'm opening it now and let it open and here we guys it is open so guys this is the code editor i'm using for my development you can use any editor and let let me just take it in this window second window quickly and here we go now i hope you can see it guys so yeah vs code just install it and initially it will look something like this so yeah once you install it will look something like this you don't need this basic things here so you can close this window and close this and this is the folder that we want this is the editor that we want to use simple is that clear guys okay all set errors you're getting errors in what like is your node installed uh react essential second app uh, i'm getting below error 404 code eprm okay that means react is unable to create path in your project npm error so guys is your node installed correctly everyone is your node installed correctly like did you check node hyphen v was that working correctly akshay rohan everyone you guys was your node hyphen v working correctly can you please confirm that once was your node hyphen v working correctly because if your node is installed then npm should not create any issues for you okay and if you're getting error guys i would suggest you to you know just go ahead and restart your pc once not right now you can do it at the end once the session ends try it if also that doesn't work then let me know because normally it should work normally it should work definitely okay but getting error okay okay so guys what i would suggest you is simply do one thing uh let the session end after the session restart your pc once okay restart your pc once and then check it once if it is still not working then let me know tomorrow and then i'll solve it for you and i'll keep your uh, errors this chat error noted don't worry our moderator is noting that so guys uh, moderator can you please note those errors that they have given so guys your errors will be noted and i'll be solving that i'll see what why that error is, is coming and then tomorrow i'll be giving you the answers don't worry about that npm error uh no entry this is related to the npm not being able to find a file okay 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 so guys please everyone i would suggest you to just go ahead after the session restart your pc once and see if it is working if it is not working then don't worry i'll solve it for you tomorrow okay is that cleared guys everyone okay don't worry okay okay nice so now guys once you have ran this command and you know installed your project successfully okay like we have this first app so you can go in your vs code and let's simply yes guys also yes uh, while creating your project please don't name it using upper case put it in lower case only hyphen is allowed but please don't put it in upper case and guys please restart your pc once after the session and then check your path as well we have also given the document link where you can see how to install node.js and a react project completely you can see that there as well okay okay so guys i think and once also for all the people who have if it is doesn't work first try reinstalling node once try reinstalling don't do it with me right now because it might you know sometimes what happens you're watching me and then you're suddenly doing it in the limited amount of time so it might create some issues you might not be able to follow everything so i would suggest you to sit afterwards and try it once more okay guys everyone okay sure then let's move ahead now so please try and don't worry guys i will solve your error if you do, do get errors after reinstalling node once more please just tell me your errors tomorrow or just put your error in the comment section i will read the comments if you get error try it after the session if you get errors put your errors in the comment section i will read those comments and tomorrow i'll try to solve all that for you is that cleared guys everyone okay cool so don't worry i'll solve it for you okay if you get any errors while doing anything just put your errors in the comment of this video and then in the next session i'll install i'll solve it for you okay so now guys once you have installed vs code it's open like this just go ahead on file then open folder and then just open the folder that you have just created it it is in documents so inside documents react essentials and your first app please open your project only guys it should be a project don't open the parent folder of this or any other thing is that clear guys just open your project because sometimes what happens you know 
people open their parent folder and then they try to run react commands react command will only work inside a react project it will not work outside the react project please make sure that you do it only open this particular project that you have installed first app which you created using npx create react app and the app name you only open that folder not its parent not its child okay open and now guys once you open it hopefully you can see it now these are all the things that you have got is that clear guys you can see these are all the things that you have got so you have folder called as node modules then public then src then git ignore then some extra files and then readme now don't worry i'm going to be explaining about all those files and folders one by one see guys right now don't focus on the errors okay because today we won't be doing a lot of code i'll be showing you some basic things but not a lot of code so don't worry just put your issues in the comment after the session so try it first if it doesn't work put your issues in the comment section guys i'll read all those comments and i'll solve it for you please trust me in that okay right now i want your complete focus into understanding this because that those errors are temporary once they go away then you will be on this don't worry i'll solve it for you okay so guys let's go okay so now we have these files and folders let's try to understand them from the least important to the most important so let's start with the least important first read me it's a simple file which is basically for your git purposes where you mention the details about your project and what is going on even if you delete this file it doesn't matter it is simply a file where all the basic setup is written like you know what command to use to run the program and some description of the other different commands so guys it is simply a descriptive file for metadata of your project like what are the files and folders in your project and how to do stuff so even if you delete this file it doesn't matter but let's keep it let's keep it okay and after that guys you also have a git ignore file again least important as of now this is important only if you are planning to upload your project on github or git right so git ignore is a file where you mention all the files and folders that you don't want to upload on git when you're committing your project so here you can see node modules some extra files are mentioned these files will never get uploaded on git okay right now you can't see anything else but you can only see this folder which is mentioned here node modules i'll tell you why don't worry but git ignore is simply a file where you mention all the files that you want git to ignore while uploading on github and if you don't know github guys just don't worry about that file right now to understand git ignore you should know what git is and guys if you don't know git let me show you i will go ahead and simply delete this file okay like you can simply move it to trash these two files you don't even need them so guys for the people who know git you know what these are for the people who don't know git right now you don't have to worry about this when we learn about github then you have to know about this even if i move them to trash doesn't matter okay so see guys very least important files they were i have deleted them now let's focus on the important files okay first is the package.json it is you can say heart of the any javascript project so guys react is a javascript library that means whatever project you create using react it is simply a js project because at the end the core is js so package.json is like a configuration file of any js project not only react angular is also a js library view is also a js library swelt is also a js library so they also have this file called as package.json okay so this file basically keeps track of your project information like what is your project name what is the project version let me zoom it for you sorry so see project name project version its privacy and the dependencies which it is using internally now see guys this is a complete react based project okay internally it is using react library so now you can see it is mentioned in the dependencies section see so this project is using react library 18.2.0 so it is using so that means we don't have to install react separately it came with the project okay but it's also having react dom right it's also having react scripts which will help to run react build react project then there is one more library called as web vitals which is not important right now but these are some libraries which your project is using internally okay then these are some scripts which we will use to run build test our project so this is the command that we'll be using to run our project so whenever we do something we can use the start command to run our project it will start running and we can see the output on the browser it will start the react server then you have a build command which will help to build the react project when you want to deploy it somewhere 
Okay, so those are the things. So you don't have to worry about them right now. You can use the test command to if you want to, you know, test your React project by running it. So those are some commands right now. Don't worry about them. Okay, right now, please don't worry about all these things, guys, because once we go ahead, we'll start understanding them one by one. Right now, just focus on these two things. This is the base idea of what your project is, project name, project version. This is the list of libraries which your project is using. Now, in future, if you install some extra libraries, right now, we have only five, six libraries, right? In future, when you go ahead and install some extra libraries in your project, they will also get mentioned here. You know why this package.json is important? First of all, it lets, let's say I share this project with you. You can also read this whole file and understand what my project is. What's the name, what's the version and what are the libraries it is using. If you launch it on a server, the server can also read this file and understand what are the things you're using. Secondly, not only this, if in future, okay, I'll tell you that later. I'll tell you that later, like the third importance. First guys, this is the configuration file of your project, a metadata of your project, description of everything about your project. Okay. Now then you also have something called as package lock, which is, you can say a extended version of package.json where again, you have the info about the pro, uh, you know, your project, but you have the, you know, uh, what do you say? The definition of your dependencies, the information of your dependencies in detail, like see here, it was only mentioned that you have a react project, a react library installed. Okay. Simple. You have a react library getting used in your project that as a dependency guys, why it is called as a dependency because you're using it. So your project is dependent on this library. That's why it's called as a dependency library. Dependency doesn't matter in here in package lock. You can see that if you go down here and if I like, you know, search for react, not only it is mentioned that your project is using react, it's also going to be mentioned. Okay. It's react is mentioned quite a lot of times. So we have to figure out where exactly you know, that simple react library is mentioned. Okay. Let me tell you now, see guys in package lock in package, you have only six, seven libraries mentioned only six, seven libraries in here. You have the complete detail of every library, their path, their version, their integrity, their encryption type, and internally, if they are also using any dependencies. So guys, see your dependencies are also project. So internally, they might be also using some dependencies. So their dependencies are also mentioned here, right? So on an overview, if you see, you have only seven dependencies, but internally these dependencies also use some more dependencies and they might also use some more dependencies. So everything about them is mentioned in package, everything in detail, their path, their integrity, their dependency that they use, their version, everything is mentioned in detail. Normally guys, you don't even have to touch this file. So as a developer, normally you won't be touching this file at all. So even if you leave it, it's completely fine, but just wanted to give you the info so that, you know, you don't just be like, oh, it's there. I don't know what it is. You should know what it is. So package.json is simply the config file of your project package lock. It's like a description, descriptive file about your project, about every dependency and its dependencies. Is that clear guys? Everyone understood what package and package lock are. And now guys, all the dependencies that are mentioned here in package and package lock, which are installed in your project, they all are present in this node modules folder. See, everything is here. So these are all the dependencies, which your project is using. See that all the folders of all the libraries, which you're using is present there so that you can use their functionalities in your project. Okay. You can see that, right? Everything around hundred, 200 libraries are already there. And if you install more, they will be here again. Everything will be placed in the folder called as node modules. Libraries are also called as modules. Okay. So guys, module is simply nothing but collection of functions and library is nothing but collection of modules. Simple idea. Okay. So all the modules, which your project is using are mentioned here. If you research, if you search properly, react is also here. React dome, everything that your project is using is here. Okay. Now guys, if you're building a react project and if a project is of around 300 MB, trust me, 90% of the size is taken by this folder node modules. So if it is of 300 MB around 290 MB will be the size of node modules. Okay. So the problem is when you share this project with someone, let's say I want to share this project with you. So my actual code is only around 2 MB, but the project size is 300 MB. 
So if I have to share it to you, or if I have to upload it somewhere, my actual code size is 2 MB, but I'm actually uploading 300 MB. That is the issue. That is why guys, you have these two files or specifically package lock. So that when I'm sharing the, my code or my React project with you, I don't have to share node models with you. I don't have to share node models. I will never share node models. I'll only share public SRC package lock and package. And then when you get my code, open it in a computer and just run a command npm install. That command will check all the libraries mentioned in package lock and install it for you and create a separate node modules folder. That means I never have to show it with you. For example, let's say this, I go ahead. Okay, someone is saying repeat node. See, fun facts, node module is simply, see, here in package lock in package, in package lock and in package, all the dependencies that your project is using are mentioned. This is only mentioned, but where are they actually? They are inside this node modules folder, all the code of those dependencies. See, dependencies are also nothing but libraries, code, which is written by someone else. So they are placed in node modules folder. So node module is a place where all the libraries and modules stay, which you're using in your project. Okay, simple. So now guys, even if I, let's say delete this. So if I have to share it with you, I'll only share these four files. So let's say I shared it with you and I didn't share node modules. Let's say I delete it from here. Okay, move to trash, yes, go away. So now guys, when I shared it, you got this thing. Simple four, uh, two folders, two files. But you need node modules because the description of those libraries is here, but where are the libraries? And without libraries, your project won't work because if they're not there, their functionalities will not work. So guys, what you have to do is just simply get this project, open it in terminal. So guys, in VS code, you have internal terminal. You can open that and guys, external terminal is also fine. Either you use VS code terminal or use any normal terminal, command prompt, PowerShell, doesn't matter. Any terminal, just open your project in that terminal. First tab, see? first tab and just run npm install. That's all. This command will read the package lock and see how many dependencies are mentioned there. And it will install everything for your project inside your project. See, run it. Just wait for some time. Maybe a minute, maybe. And here we go. You can see it has created a node models folder for you and all the libraries are back. See that guys. So understood why do we need package lock? Why do we need a file where everything is mentioned? So that when I share the project with you, you can run this command. It will read this package lock and install everything for you. So that is why you need a file where all the libraries your project is using are mentioned. Understood guys. It's like a list of items. It's a, like a list of items that your project needs. That's it. So that you share it with someone. They can also read the list of items and install everything that they need. Is that clear guys? Hopefully. Okay. Rohan is asking, sir, can you please tell the difference between package and package lock? Package is a basic overview of your project. Package lock is a extended description of all the libraries and their libraries. So package lock is a detailed, it's a file which contains detailed information about all your libraries. Package JSON is simply, which contains a very basic idea of what libraries you're using, only the main libraries and the project idea, project name, project version. That's all. Package lock contains all the description of libraries, everything, libraries, their libraries, their libraries, everything. Okay. So guys, I hope you're understanding everything because I'm trying to tell you everything in deep. I'm not just starting with React and, you know, just going away with components and everything. I want you guys to understand everything so that in interviews and everywhere, when you go, you should know about each and everything. Okay. Now then let's go, let's go and let's go to this folder public. Now guys, it's again, very important folder public. If you open it, you will see a few things here. So the first thing that you see, yes, guys, don't worry. I'm going to that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. So now second thing that you have is so public folder in public. If you open it, you'll first see the icon dot icon file. It guys, it's simply a file, which is the icon file, which you see right here. When you open your web page, you see on top right here, that's a web icon guys. So when you run your react application, this icon will be displayed on top here. See guys, see that everyone, this is called as a web icon. Okay. Or sometimes it is also used somewhere else. That's all. That's it guys. That is it. So leave that. It's okay. Web icon. Okay. Then you have the most important file, which is index.html. 
this is the file that runs as a web page this is the only html file that will run as a web page is that clear guys so let me give you idea see if we go back to our jam board i told you right everyone that you will be creating header component separately banner component separately product separately all this now let me give you a little more idea okay how react actually works so let's say guys please focus everyone now this is very important so please 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 focus okay now let's say you're creating a web page okay let's say you're creating a web page sorry so let's go let's say creating a web page so you know you created header component you created banner component i'm showing you how react works you created a products component and you have also created a product component okay see guys let me name them quickly so you have header you have banner you have products and you have single product so let's call it as s product single product okay single product now the idea is you have all four components that you want to make your complete web page so what happens is in react you by default have a html page so this is your html page let's say this is your index.html and when you install a react project you also get a by default component which you can consider as a main component so you are going to be creating your own components like header banner products and everything but you also have an inbuilt component called as app component which is your main component okay guys main component that's the idea main component app component or main component now what you have to do is whatever components you create you have to make sure that directly or indirectly you have to load them all in app component in whatever sequence you want so let's say i want header first then i want banner then i want products and inside products you will be loading product so you can also load a component inside a component so you are loading single product in products and then you are loading header first then banner after that so you have created header first then banner and then all the products and then app component is the component which is loaded in the html file that means at the end only one component gets loaded in your html file and this is the html file which actually opens up in the browser this is the file so all the components that you create they should be directly or indirectly that means either directly or indirectly through some other component should be loaded in app component because your app component is loaded in index.html and that is the only file which runs on the browser is that clear guys that's how react works that is why the application that you create using react that is called as a single page application not because it is done in you know uh, you only see one page no you can create a effect of multiple page but guys react only uses only one html file that is the reason it is called as a single page application not because you see only one web page in react you can make that idea that you have multiple web pages right you can click on a link and open a new page it will give you a effect of new page you can have multiple pages you can give a effect of multiple pages so technically that's not meaning the sing of single page application single page application means you only have one html file which runs on the browser that is the only single page that runs that's why the applications that you create using react are called as single page applications only one html file and this is that this file is that one which loads on the browser and if you read it see it's having nothing it's having some basic idea basic header head meta link and all that stuff and the only thing that is very important here is this div see you have a div with id root remember this don't forget this div is that clear guys everyone are you understanding everything till now please confirm that did you get this whole idea everyone so you will create a lot of components all these components should be loaded inside a app component and app is directly loaded in nature html it's already configured you don't have to worry about it it's already done internally but i can create more components and put it in app component and that in the index.html is that cleared guys everyone okay and that will run on the browser that's the base idea and this is that file index.html okay and see it's simply having a div that's all now let me show you how it works it is you can see guys please remember this in index.html you have a div which is having a id of root don't forget this okay now guys again you have some images here so you can see you have some react images here leave that 
So guys, public is having one main file that is index.html. Now in future, you can also use your public folder to you put your fonts, images, video, audio that you're using in your site. So it's also a folder where you will keep all your assets. Is that clear guys? It's also a folder where you keep all your assets. So you can put, keep your images, fonts, audio, videos here as well. Uh, Sham Sundar is asking use of node modules. Uh, Sham Sundar node modules is simply a folder where all the libraries are stored. So our project is using React, React DOM, Babel, a lot of libraries internally. All the libraries are stored in node modules. Okay. So your project will be internally using all those libraries for doing stuff and will be also using the libraries. But all those libraries are present in node modules, stored in there. It's a folder where all the libraries are stored. In future, if I install bootstrap library or some other library, they will also be stored in node modules. Is that cleared? That's it. That's it. It's a place where all the libraries are stored. That's it. Sir, this video will be here. Yes, it will be recording here. Okay, now guys, let's go ahead. See, right now you don't have to worry about this robots.txt. It's simply a file when you need, when you are launching this site on a browser. So right now, even if you delete this, it doesn't matter. Right now, don't worry about this manifest.json, guys. Again, you don't have to worry about it. It is simply for some kind of structuring. You know, if you want to put some strings and icons for your project. Right now, don't worry about them. Not very important. So guys, right now, I'm simply trying to, you know, leave the unimportant files. We'll come back to them. Don't worry. I'll still explain you what is manifest and what is robots. But right now, leave them. So public folder is the folder where you have your main file, index.html. And in future, your images, audios, videos, fonts will be also stored here that you want to use in your web page. Right now, don't worry about manifest.json. Don't worry about robots.txt. Right now, don't worry. You need them for some structuring and deployment. Even if I delete them, it doesn't matter right now. Don't worry. Okay. Now then, Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the most important folder of your project, the most important guys, which is SRC. This is where you will spend around 99% of your time in development SRC. Okay. This is the place where you have all the files. So guys, all the components, everything that you will create, everything about that component will be present in SRC only. Uh, Prithvi Raj, don't uh, spam the chat, buddy. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, see, as I said, Prith, uh, Prithviraj, Prithviraj, yeah. Please try to reinstall Node.js and run it once again. As I can't see your screen, that's the problem actually. So try installing Node.js again after the session and try it once. If it doesn't work, just put this chat in the comment. Once the live stream ends, just put this chat, just put this particular message that you're putting here in the comment. I'll read it and I'll solve it and I'll let you know tomorrow. Because, you know, right in live stream, if I can't see the screen, I don't. You know, I cannot give you the exact correct answer, right? So please put this whole error in the comment after the live stream ends. Okay, buddy. And also guys, we are at 463. Please, can we make 500 likes everyone? Can we? Come on, let's do it. Now guys, remember, as I told you, every component will have its own HTML, have its own CSS and have its own JS, correct? I told you that, right everyone? Every component will have its own HTML, will have its own CSS and will have its own JS. Okay. So every component will have it. Even the app component, which is already there. Now let me show you. See guys, here you already have a file called as app.css, app.js. Correct everyone. So these are the two files related to that component. Now here you don't have HTML files. So technically only while initially telling you, I told you about HTML. Actually in React, you don't have HTML files. The only HTML file you will ever have is this one, index.html, that's all. So in React, every component have CSS and JS. Okay, now don't worry about, sir, where the HTML is going then. I'll tell you that, don't worry about that. Guys, in React, HTML is also written in JS. Now, technically, that's not HTML, but right now, consider it HTML. So HTML is also written inside JS files only. So you only have CSS and JS. So every component that you create will mostly always have its own CSS and its own JS. And if not CSS, at least it will have its own JS file. So guys, every component is going to be having one JS file. And sometimes that's also not possible. Sometimes you might create two components in a single JS file. Okay. So guys, now before we move ahead to the actual understanding, let me give you one more idea. So see guys, coding wise, see. Theory wise, a component is nothing but part of a UI, like 
header is a component this banner is a component this products area is a component correct everyone so according to theory logic component is nothing but a part of a ui but while creation while creation guys when you actually want to create a component in react a component is nothing but a function guys a function returning some html that's all that's all guys a function sorry a component is nothing but a function returning some html which will give you a output of an html thing like header or banner or products that's it so let's let's say for example to create this header you might use devs and all that stuff right so you will have a header function a javascript function which will be returning this thing dev which will have header and all that stuff so return dev slash dev and all the html code that you might ins inside you know let's say you you wanted inside something like li ul whatever it is guys the base idea that's the base idea okay so every component is nothing but a function which is returning some html okay i hope you're getting the point guys everyone i really really hope you're getting the point and let me close this window yeah okay so that's it guys that's it okay so now if you go ahead here you have an app.css as i told you guys you will by default have a component called as app in your pc which is in your project which is your main component and other components you will create by yourself for now let me show you the app component so see guys you have app.css which is your components css file and then you have app.js you will open it you will see as i told you in the description it is simply a function named app which is returning some html can you see that guys everyone can you see that it is simply a function which is returning some html which will generate some output that's all so guys here you don't have html files there is only one html file which is index.html in which you will not do anything but you only have a component which is nothing but a function see file name is app.js component name is app which is nothing but a function which is returning some html which will generate some output so a component theoretically it's a part of a ui part of a web page programmatically it's a function returning some html that's it that's all done that means if you want to create a component you just have to create a js file inside that a function which will return whatever html you want whatever you want to generate in the output a product or a products or an image or a youtube video or something like that just write the html for that in that component that's it so whatever you will write in a normal html file you have to write in a function component that's it is that clear guys all cleared everyone so technically it's that and guys as i also said as i also said right that your app component is by default loaded in index.html let me show you if it is true or not and guys then i'll run the file okay so guys here you can also see right you also have a file called as index.js can you see that index.js so if you open it see it is mentioned here see now guys don't worry about this big code here don't worry but let me show you remember this guys you had a dev with id root remember that guys you had a dev with id root document dot get element by id root remember this everyone in your html file you had a div with id root see so that is the div which we are fetching in this file document dot get element by id root and we are storing it in a variable called as root and i'm saying by using react functionalities don't worry guys right now don't worry about that just giving you an idea that by using react functionalities i'm telling inside root that means inside this div render the app component which is nothing but your this so guys components are called using tags okay so in here the name of the component is app a double p when you want to load it somewhere so just like i told you right you will load header component here you will load banner component here so when you create the component you will create a function and to use it you will use it as a tag so that's what we are doing here while creating the component we are giving it a name called as app and while using it while loading it somewhere we are simply using it like a tag app so whatever name you give to the function that is the exact same name you have to use for the tag and wherever you put that tag just think that internally 
all this HTML, all this HTML which that app component is returning, it's actually getting loaded here. So even if I remove it, you can think it's actually getting loaded here, like this. Just think like that. But just to make your code simpler, you created a co component separately, gave it a name and loaded that component here. But internally think that whatever HTML that component is returning, that code is coming here. Okay, that's it guys. And since you're loading your app inside root, which is nothing but this root div, that means at the end, all the things from your app component are actually going inside this div. Technically, everything is coming inside this div. So right now, as of now, you know what's happening? Right now, this thing that this whole code is coming inside this div. That is what is happening right now. Oh, wait, I didn't copy it. Wait, wait, wait. So technically right now, this whole HTML is coming in here like this. So this is your web page actually. This is a web page. But that's how things are working. Okay. So if I have to explain you again, the idea is you have an app component. A component is nothing but a function which is returning some HTML. Correct guys? A component is nothing but a function returning some HTML. Right? That means whenever, wherever I use this component, this whole HTML is getting loaded there. So I am loading this component in here in root dot render and who is root root is nothing but the element with the ID root, which is nothing but on your index file, this particular div, that's all. So inside this div, you're loading the app component and the file responsible for doing that is this index.js, which is from one side getting that div element from one side, it is getting the div element and from one side, it is getting the app component and putting the app component in the div element. That's it. That means putting the app component in index.html. That's it. Is that clear guys? That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. So that index.js, this file is responsible for loading this component, app component inside this particular div. Simple. By getting that div, putting it in a variable and then inside that div, rendering the app component. Don't worry about this React DOM and all that stuff right now. I'm going to tell you that tomorrow. Don't worry. But guys, you got the idea, everyone? You got the whole idea, guys? Can you please confirm? Got the idea now? So right now, when you run this file, you have only one component called as app component. Okay. And if you run this, this will be your output. So as I told you guys, right? Remember, app component is loaded on HTML file. You got the idea how it is working now? How app component is loaded on HTML? There's a file called as index.js, which takes the div from the HTML file and this whole app component and then loads the app component in that HTML file. So basically taking all this app component thing and putting in the HTML file, it is the job of this index.html. And now we can also create our own components and we have to put them in header. And guys, don't forget, whatever components you create, they are simply functions returning some HTML. And you can also load them and to load a component, you will use it as a tag. Let me give you more examples. But before that guys, now let's go and let's run our project and let's see the output. Okay. Ready? Let's go. So guys, just open your terminal. So now you know the whole configuration and guys, you see, there were some extra files as well, like logo.svg, report web vital. They are some testing files. Even if you remove them, doesn't matter, remove them, but let's keep them. Okay, the only important files here are app.css, app.js, index.css, index.js. That's all. Okay, so if I go and remove them, but I'll remove them, but after some time. First of all, let me run this project. So now guys, open your terminal and just run the command npm start. Remember I told you guys initially that we have a start command. Remember the configuration file, package.json. I told you, right, that we have a start command here. See? So when you run this start command internally, it is running this command, but we don't have to worry about that. Our job is to only run this command start. So npm start and enter. Now it will run our project and internally start a server, a react server, a local server. And if you see now, here we go. 
your project is up and running. It will open a browser window and see guys, this is the output. This is the output of your React project. This whole image, this edit SRC and all that stuff is coming from where? It's coming from your app.js, your component. See this? See, same thing guys. The image, the logo, which is rotating here and this edit code, see, edit SRC, see, it's here, edit SRC. Then you have this link, learn React. It's here, learn React. So if I go ahead now and I just take this whole thing, just keep the div and take the other thing, remove it and just put a simple H1. Okay, I don't know why the shortcut is not working, but let's go. H1, welcome everyone. And guys, don't worry, once you save it, the program will auto run and your output will be changed. See, welcome everyone. And see guys, that logo was rotating, right? That means somewhere some animation is written. So if you go to app.css, see, here's the logic of that animation. See, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the CSS, which is there and see by default, your welcome is in center. See that? Why? Because it is mentioned here. It is mentioned inside dot app, whatever is there, text line center and see your class name is what? Let's close the files that we don't need. Your class name is app. So it is putting in center. So now if I go ahead and just remove all the CSS from here and you only have simple file like this. Welcome everyone. Very simple, sophisticated file. That's all. And now you can start things from scratch. That's it. And guys, again, you never have to normally visit this HTML file, you know, this index.js. Normally you never have to visit them. So don't worry about them. Okay. Just wanted to explain a few things. And guys, see this app.css is only working for app.js. Then you also have something called as index.css, which is like a global CSS. So if you want to write some CSS, which is applied to the whole project at once, you can put it in index.css here. Okay. Okay. And see guys, you might have seen one big difference that in HTML, you write class, but in React, in your HTML, you're writing class name. Why is that? Don't worry. Tomorrow, I'm going to explain you that. Why do we write class name? Because guys, see, this thing here that you see, it looks like HTML, works like HTML, but it is not HTML. It is not at all HTML. Is that clear, guys? So, it is something called a JSX, but it looks and works exactly like HTML. Don't worry, I'm going to be telling you tomorrow what is JSX and why do we have it here. But guys, Normally think of it like HTML only, then it will be easier for you, HTML, but just replace class with class name. Don't use class, use class name. Everything else is fine. Just use class name instead of class. That's all. Now guys, finally, we can go ahead and see now we are no longer using that logo, right? So you can remove that file. Let's remove the extra file that we don't need. Remove the logo file. We don't need that. Yes. Remove the setup test. We don't need it. Remove this testing file. We don't need it. And remove this report web vitals as well. Right now we don't need it. And guys, this is how your file should look like. And guys, one more thing. If you remove the report web vitals, please don't forget from here also remove the function that is calling it because it was coming from that file only and remove the import as well. And now guys, this is your basic code. Now it looks much more simpler, right? App components having its own CSS, own JS. Index.js is a file which loads app component into index.html and then you have index.css like a global CSS for your whole project. And that's it guys. This is the basic setup. That's it. Now let me show you how to create your own component. As I told you guys, your own component will be nothing but a function returning some HTML. Let me show you. The final thing for today is I'm showing you how to create your own component. Okay. Just go in SRC. Okay. Right click. Go in SRC and create a new file. Call it whatever you want. Let's say we call it as header. Now guys, see, you can name it in lowercase, but it's something that follow in React. We go ahead and always name our component with camel cases, sorry, capital letters in the start and then camel casing so that it's easier for us to understand. So start with capital letter and then follow camel casing. Simple logic. Okay. Every other word should start with capital. So header.js, let's say header.js, simple. And as I said, guys, a component is nothing but a function, which is simply going to have same name as file. Guys, try to always give it same name as file, please. So that, you know, it is understandable easily. What is the name of the component? So header, and as I said, a component will simply return some HTML. 
So return some HTML. So let's say, you know, something like a div for now. Return a div with, let's say, hello, I am header. And now guys, we are done with the component, but you can see we have some error. Okay. I removed the, okay. See guys, the error is can't resolve what is logo.svg. Why? Because we deleted the logo file, but in our app.js, we are still importing it. That's why. So remove that please. Okay. And now you'll see the error is gone. But now see guys, I have created the header component. It is also having some HTML, but I can't see it in the output. Why? As I told you guys, whatever components you create directly or indirectly, they should be loaded in app.js or app component. Then only you can see it because see guys, whatever goes on index.html that is only visible to you and on index.html app component is loaded. So whatever components you create, please load them on app component. Otherwise they, you can't see them. So guys to load it, first thing you have to do is this is a component, a function returning some HTML. The first thing you have to do is export this component. So export default. That's how you export something in JavaScript so that it can be used in different files. So export default and the component name header. So export default header. That means now anyone who imports this file, they can use this function in that file. So please export because if you can't export, you can't be using it in the other file. Now go in your app file, which is your app component and import that header there. So import header, the name of your component. Okay. Header from dot slash header, which is nothing but what the file name. Guys, you don't have to put dot JS because react knows it's going to be a JS file. So import header, which is nothing but guys, what the component name and from this file. So import header component from header.js and that's it guys. Now, as I told you, just use it like a tag. Just use it like a tag, use your component like a tag. And guys, yeah, this is the last thing for today. And that's it guys. Use it wherever you want in your code. And that's it guys. So now you have imported the header component on app component and you have used it in that app component. That means wherever you put this component internally, you're putting this HTML, which that component is returning. And that's it. Now, if you run this file, you will see, hello, I'm a header as well. See that guys. Hopefully you can see it everyone. That's all. So you can create n number of components and put all of them together one by one to create a complete web page. Is that clear guys? No, no, no guys. While exporting your function, no need to put this. Okay. That's why see the app component is also getting exported. Why? Because in index.js it is getting imported so that it can be used here. Just like that, our header component, you also have to export so that you can use it here. And that's it guys, everyone. That's all. That's how you create your own component, a function, which returns HTML guys. If you, if you will just remember this, you'll never be confused. Practically piece of a UI coding wise function returns some HTML. That's it. That's all. Don't make it complicated. It is not complicated at all. Yes. So if you want to export something anywhere, sorry, if you want to import something anywhere, you have to export it without exporting. You can't import. Okay. That's how it works. So guys, are we cleared here everyone? So that was the introduction to react. And now I hope you know everything about the basic folder structure, the basic files that you have here, what is component and how to create a very basic component. And now in tomorrow's session, we'll talk more about components. Then we'll move ahead and talk about props and states and everything that comes from now on. And we'll create some beautiful components as well. Don't worry. Yes. And also about JSX tomorrow. We'll talk about JSX right now, guys, please just think of it like HTML. But as I said, just in your heart, remember that this is not HTML. It looks like HTML works like HTML behaves like HTML, but it is not HTML. So please don't forget. I'm going to be telling you everything about that. So that tomorrow's day is also very important. So guys, I hope that you'll be joining tomorrow as well. Please let me know that in the chat as well and keep all your doubts because I'm going to be solving that tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll talk about JSX. I'll tell you what Babel is because I think a lot of people are asking, right? What exactly is Babel? Then we'll talk about props, some more components and then state if we get time. So we have a lot of things to talk about tomorrow. And guys, if you get any errors while installing anything or doing anything, please put in the comments of this video. Once the live stream ends, I'll solve that for you. Don't worry. Okay. After deleting, I think it might be the web vitals file Herschel. 
So please, if you have deleted all the files from your app.js, also remove the logo import. Okay, in your app.js, you might be having a logo import. And in your index.js, you might have report web vitals import. Please remove them as well. Okay. So guys, that's it everyone. That's it for today. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Please like the video if you have enjoyed it. Please. Let's see. Let's see if we can reach 600 guys. We are already at 530. Let's see if we can reach 600. Okay. Let's see. So please like it guys. And also please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll be seeing you tomorrow when we talk about more things. And if we get time guys, don't worry. I'll also teach you about class-based components. Okay. So yep guys, everyone. Thank you so much. Tomorrow also exact same time, 630. Okay, 6.30 as well. No assignments for today, guys, as this was a warm-up. And I hope that now you, got, you have got warmed up. So tomorrow I'll see you. Okay, when we'll be talking about more. Okay, so guys, yep, that's all. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm not getting the header component. Can you please show it again? Yeah, you can see it here. That's how you create it. Header, function, name, return something, some whatever element, simple element you want. Then export it, export default the function name. And then in app.js, just import it. Import header. Guys, tomorrow we'll also talk more about export and import. Don't worry. So import whatever you're exporting. Header. See, import header from the file name. And then use it like a tag. That's it. Tomorrow, 6.30, guys. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye. Good night. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.